both sides ready to proceed? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Judge Stevenson just shakes. And Judge Stevenson just reminded me that you're just one side. So. That's great. I knew that. They just told me two minutes before, and I still forgot it. So, But you will have 15 minutes. Don't mention, I know this is not relevant here, don't mention victims or um, mention uh, the names of um, any minors or anything. We just like to make sure we say that on the record. Certainly. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. May it please the court. My name is Matthew Romano, the law office of Matthew S. Romano, LLC. I'm here on behalf of the plaintiff and appellant, Roberta Schlegel. The case in front of you right now on appeal is the second time this case has been first time that it was in front of you, you overturned the trial court decision based on the appeal from the defendant in Southern County that the subject property was not a sewer. We are back up on appeal because in the original decision in front of the trial court, the trial court ruled that under Ohio Revised Code 2744.02b3, that the obstruction on the public roadway um, did not include the type of issue that occurred here. For a basic resuscitation of the facts, Mrs. Schlegel has lived in her property um, in Sagamore Hills Township for a little over 30 years. Uh, it was around 30 years at the time this event happened. Her property runs up against a county roadway, Boynton Road. Boynton Road has had um, various repairs done to it, and in fact, um, since the events in question, had an entire, I'm going to call it a sewer line, notwithstanding that this court's view is that it's not a sewer system, but a culvert underneath the roadway replaced. It had had a number of issues with sinkholes because the original pipe had rusted out. In fact, shortly before the events in question, which the events in question happened in 2017, the county had repaired a sinkhole. There had been flooding and at least rainwater coming through, and as the um, culvert, the pipe that was underneath the roadway, um, rusted away, the um, asphalt sunk and eventually created a sinkhole and clogged the culvert underneath the way from. The county then cleared that um, asphalt out, put on the agenda to have the entire culvert pipe replaced underneath the roadway. And in the time between having that bid and having that done, um, another sinkhole formed again. And um, the same thing happened. The uh, concrete or asphalt uh, came down, clogged the pipe underneath the roadway, and um, it created quite a bit of backup. So the dates in question are um, May 21st through May 28th of 2017. Uh, there was repeated rainfall during that time. And um, because Mrs. Schlegel's property is on the north, excuse me, the northwest tip of Mrs. Schlegel's property, abuts up against the uh, corner of Boyden Road and Meadowview Road, um, her entire yard became a lake. Eventually, within a, a, a week, I think it was sometime between um, uh, May 28th and June 1st, 2017, the county came and cleaned out the debris from underneath the roadway, the roadway that had collapsed, and taken its portion of the roadway away from the culvert pipe, and the flooding had stopped. And it rained several times over the next month before an entire new culvert was put in. There are two, two real issues that are in front of this court with this current appeal. One is, was the county's obligation to pull the debris out of the culvert, out of the rusted culvert that existed, a uh, action that they needed to do before the entire pipeline was replaced. And if the entire pipeline underneath the roadway had to be replaced, there's probably an exception to um, the county's obligation to operate without negligence. But it's very key here that the county not once but twice fixed the flooding issue, fixed, fixed the clause clogged, fallen roadway before replacing the entire pipe. So, quite simply, there is no dispute that the county very clearly, through its um, uh, custodian or 
um, maintenance department was performing routine maintenance when it stopped the flooding from happening. Also not up for dispute is that the cause of the flood was in fact the debris having fallen into that culvert pipe underneath the roadway. So with regard to the issue of whether or not this was routine maintenance or whether this was a um, larger, broader scheme, uh, please do not confuse, this court should not confuse that at least with regard to the issue that could remedy the flooding, it was regular routine maintenance performed by the maintenance department. Uh, they actually had knowledge of it, had first started by putting a cone over the uh, block roadway, um, then they came back and put a um, metal plate over the roadway, and then eventually, finally, they cleared out the debris, but a, a week later after three different rainfalls. But is the culvert considered maintaining the roadway? Thank you so much, because that issue is segues into, Your Honor, the second issue, which is, the, which is the, the central issue argued in the brief. What is the obligation for the county to maintain the roadway? What is a roadway? I will define for you, under Ohio Revised Code 2744.01H, public roads. Public roads means, quote, public roads, highways, streets, avenues, alleys, and bridges within a political subdivision, period. Public roads does not include berms, shoulders, right-of-way, or traffic control devices. This is not on the side of the road. This is not on the berm. The issue here is the asphalt was in the main portion of the roadway. The sink pole was in the main portion of the roadway, and the culvert was directly below that roadway. It is, it is an unmitigated fact that the culvert underneath the roadway is part of the roadway and is underneath the main part of the roadway. So there's no dispute that the county is maintaining that culvert and the roadway itself. The county also happens to be maintaining the sideway ditches and the berms along the side of the roadway, but as the Ohio legislator has concluded, on the side of the road and not on the main roadway itself is not part of the roadway. That is completely different than the situation we have in front of here. And it also shows that if the, if the state legislator wanted to um, limit what portion of the roadway would be included, including the pipe directly underneath the roadway, it could have done so just like it did for sideway berms and sideway ditches. It did not. Uh, in the statute, it may not say that, but there is case law that interprets that to say, you know, if, if, if they don't maintain the roadway and it's a danger to the traveling public. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would respectfully disagree with that. And I think that the case that you may be referring to was heavily relied on by the county, and that's Howard versus Miami Township. You may recall, Your Honors, that a plaintiff appellate, uh, Roberta Schlegel, has heavily replied, relied on the Sherwin-Williams case. The Sherwin-Williams case, and I will segue over into Howard on Miami Township, but I just want to help set that's the foundation. Like, I'm sorry, none of those are ninth district cases, though, right? These are Supreme Court of Ohio cases. Okay, that's what there, there were several other cases that, if, uh, time permitting, I will just quickly address that were not ninth district appellate cases, nor were they Supreme Court of Ohio cases. Um, however, Sherwin-Williams and uh, Howard versus Miami Township were, in fact, both Supreme Court cases. In Sherwin-Williams, the case, the court analyzed the prior version of the very same statute that's in front of you right now. And the court held, in, in the Sherwin-Williams case, that an accident that was caused on a, on a highway was the result of a nuisance that originally occurred on a, in a public building, or a public property, excuse me. They were a public maintenance department was burning Christmas trees. A big smoke and billow went over onto the neighboring highway, and a chain car accident occurred. And the issue in Sherwin Williams was, okay, well, the nuisance occurred on uh, county property, on public property, but it did not. The accident and the damage did not occur on the county property. It, it, it occurred on the neighboring property. And the issue that the Supreme Court analyzed was. What did the Ohio legislator truly, truly mean for the, the damage to actually happen or the accident to happen on the county property itself or on the, on the municipality's uh, uh, property itself? And ultimately, the Supreme Court of Ohio concluded no, it did not. 
if, this, if the Ohio legislator intended for the damage to actually happen on the county property itself, in this case it would be a roadway in the Roberta Schlegel's case, but in that case it was a, a, a maintenance area, the court said no, Ohio legislator knows how to limit damage to actually occurring on the property. And Ohio legislator still does that with regard to um, Ohio Revised Code 2744.02b4, the subsection right after the one that, that uh, Roberta Schlegel is relying upon here. It's, it talks about um, uh, political subdivisions are liable for injury, death, or loss to person or property that is caused by the negligence of their employees and that occur within or on the grounds of and is due to the physical defects within or on the grounds of the building that are used in connection with performance of a governmental function. That, that requirement that it actually be on the property is not required for roadways on um, 2744.02b3. Now, Your Honor, um, you had mentioned, but hasn't the Supreme Court since Shirley Williams mentioned that it's only 24, uh, 24 2744.02b3 is only supposed to be um, for injuries and death that occur on the roadway itself. That is a simplistic reading of the Howard decision. And the Howard decision has been repeated, but only in the context of what is an obstruction on the roadway. It's obstruction versus whether or not the damage has to be on the roadway itself. So this is, this is very key. In Howard, the Supreme Court of Ohio acknowledges that the Ohio legislator revised 2744.02b3 to change from a nuisance being enough to cause the harm or be a negligence on the part of the uh, governmental entity to it having to be an obstruction on a roadway. Obstruction versus nuisance was what was being analyzed. Now, as part of that, you're going to see in various paragraphs, for example, in paragraph 26 of the Howard decision, or in paragraph 29 of the Howard decision, and I'm going to quote the parts that the county had quoted um, in their brief because it is, it is important. It's the central issue in this case. Paragraph 26 of the Howard decision. We are persuaded that the legislator's action in amending revised code 2744.02b3 was not whimsy but deliberate effort to limit political subdivision liability. It should stop there. In this case, it goes on to say, for injuries and deaths on their roadways. Well, yes, of course, in the our decision, what we were talking about was a teenager driving on a road where there was ice on the road, ultimately a fatal accident. The court determined that ice was not an obstruction on the roadway. Whether or not the injury of death occurred on the roadway was irrelevant in that case. It absolutely occurred on the roadway in that case. They were, they, the, the Supreme Court in Sherwin Williams was analyzing whether or not it has to happen on the roadway itself or on the public grounds itself. In Howard, as well as the other decisions cited in, in the um, uh, county's brief, which are not uh, Supreme Court cases, I think one might be a Supreme Court case, but they weren't analyzing whether or not the, the injury could occur off the roadway. It, it could have and should have said, including but not limited to injuries that could have happened on the roadway itself, but the issue of whether or not it had to be on the roadway was not an issue. And it's dangerous to read that superfluous language. The issue was, the legislator clearly did intend to limit the liability. They changed the word nuisance to obstruction. Counsel, we, I, 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 uh, you're running out of time, and I have a question. Sure, to ask no, absolutely. You. Okay. Um, and i just trying to figure this out. If, if the trial court's um, interpretation of the statute and the statute in the uh, counties is correct, would that mean if a car, due to an obstruction, ran off the roadway and um, hit somebody and killed them, or if damaged property, like ran into a house and damaged the property, would that those individuals not be able to, would there still be immunity for the county in regard to those? That's what the trial court and, and the county would hope in this case, but my position is with regard to at least 2744.02b3, it would in fact be liable when you apply the Sherwin-Williams holding. That has not been changed. It is dangerous, again, if we just take the quoted language and take it out of context from Howard and the cases after Howard, it looks like, oh no, the damage has to be on the roadway itself. That wasn't the issue in those cases. The issue was, was it an obstruction?
obstruction or wasn't an obstruction. And yes, there was limiting language to obstruction versus nuisance. Here, it is unambiguously, meet, the fall on asphalt unambiguously meets the definition of obstruction. And if um, you need a, a definition of obstruction, feel free to read it in the Howard case. They define it from Webster's Dictionary. Um, I would also uh, make the point, uh, Your Honors, that I tried to have this appeal at the same time as the prior one about whether or not this was a sewer. And counsel, I hate to say it, but you're in that town with 14 seconds, so I'm going to remind you. Yeah, no, I, I understand. That's my last okay. statement. Thank you, Your Honor. That, um, uh, lost my train of thought there. Okay. That, that um, the, the, prior appeal. The, as the asphalt itself um, was on the roadway. It's either, it's either a sewer system or it's a roadway, but either way, it's the obligation of the county. And for that reason, for all of the reasons already stated, we would kindly request that you overturn the trial court's decision. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. The court will take the matter under advisement. We will issue uh, a written opinion, and that opinion will be mailed to uh, both sides, and we'll release it on the Ohio Supreme Court website as well. Thank you. Thank you so much.